It's apparent that John Carl was determined that Todd's police would not join the ranks of the 85,000 failed businesses. Somehow, even with virtually no cash circulating, he managed to keep the doors open by bartering his goods, such as coffee, flour, and lard for the Galax herbs and eggs the locals would use for purchasing. January 26, 1936. Still cold today. 12 degrees above zero almost all day. Carl went to Wilkesboro. I've been busy at the store. Bought $34 worth of hams, almost 200 pounds. Sold 800 Galax and got $24. The first big day since the cold spell started after Christmas. I got so cold as it was 10 to 18 around the store. I'm feeling bad today anyway. Did not sleep well last night. During these turbulent times, another child was born to the Todd family. On August 3rd, 1930, another daughter joined the family. She was named Mary Alice. The name Mary Alice reflected the huge part that Aunt Mary Alice Hodge had played in the rearing of John Carl. Amazingly, during this period in the early 1930s, they managed to tear down the old house next to the store and build a beautiful new home which stands next to the store until this day. It is owned by one of John Carl and Pearl's grandchildren and his family. It stands as a testament to the grit and the determination of a couple that refused to be ruled by adversarial aspects of life, such as the Great Depression. The new home was completed in time to welcome a new member to the Todd family. On August 12th, 1932, was born Sadie Virginia. She would be their last child in an effort to provide work for the countless unemployed during the early 1930s, President Franklin D. Roosevelt created the Civilian Conservation Corps. These came to be known as CC Camps, and one was built in Buffalo Cove, about two miles from Todd's place. The workers were paid a small salary with room and board. Their work consisted of erecting buildings, campsites, toilets, dams, and roads. They had to cut the timber and hew the lumber themselves. They did not have drawings or the help of architects and engineers. They built with what they found on site. According to our old friend, Luther Adams, the Buffalo Cove CC Camp became a windfall to Todd's place. Well, did the man that worked at the CC Camp, did they trade at Paul Todd's or did they have their own stuff or what? They all them trade down there. Did they? Well, they, they had a supply truck to come in here with. They had a big kitchen over here as long as this house. They had 454. Really? That many? Yeah. They have old boys over there. And I go over there to Derby, get a jar of liquor, and they come over here for a pint of liquor. They bring me a big ham. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> what about that? And that's 450 of them? Yeah. That's where I got my nose broke for time to my <laughs> kick. <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you. I've been through it. Yes, the 1930s were turbulent times. It was a completely different world than the one that we know today. 
Instead of buying the main course for Sunday dinner at the grocery store, it was often supplied by hunting wild game. Whenever he could get a few hours away from Todd's place, John Carl himself loved hunting and fishing. Buffalo Cove was a haven for deer, wildcat, turkey, wild boar, raccoon, bear, rabbit, squirrel, and the fishing was and still is an angler's dream. John Carl and Pearl were very active and supportive of Buffalo Cove Baptist Church, which was then and still is directly across the road from the store. In a time when there were no televisions or computers, the rural churches across America gave folks a place not only to worship, but to meet and share news, thoughts, and ideas. Even though there were hospitals during these times, it was not commonly accepted that giving birth was necessary for a hospital visit. In fact, all of John Carl and Pearl's children were delivered in their home with the assistance of what was then known as a midwife. These women, for the most part, had no medical degrees, but had the basic knowledge of bringing newborns into the world. Attending school was also quite different than today. During the elementary years of school, the Todd siblings actually hiked across a mountain known as Jack Hill behind the Todd home to arrive at Buffalo Cove School. This was done come rain or shine. February 2nd, 1936. It's snowing today, has snowed every Saturday or Sunday since Christmas. I'm better today, can help with the cooking and housework. February 3rd, 1936. My, how slick this morning. Sleeted last night. Nina had to take hold of her shoes before she could cross the foot logs. I had a good laugh at her trying to walk to school. February 7th, 1936. We had snow again today, about eight inches, real cold. The kids couldn't go to school yesterday. There's been about 15 to 25 loafers in the store from morning till night during these bad days. It must have been a challenge for the teacher since there were several different grades mixed into one group. Pictures of this little country school are very rare. Here we see the Buffalo School girl students, then the boy students shown in a separate picture. We are fortunate enough today to have a resident artist in Buffalo Cove. Her name is Connie Watson. She and her husband Jerry live about a mile from the store and Connie even works as a part-time employee at the store. Connie was called upon by some of the original students of the school to use her talent of painting to recreate the look of the old schoolhouse. With very little to go by visually, Connie relied greatly on the recollections of the former students to create these paintings. With such a small amount to work from, it's obvious that her artistry and imagination were able to make lemonade out of lemons. Yes, indeed, 1930s life in Buffalo Cove was a far cry from the hustle and bustle of the world we know today. Neighbors were neighbors back then. The community itself was almost like one big family with Todd's place at the hub. John Carl stayed busy with the store while Pearl raised the children. January 27, 1936. 
Another day and another almost sleepless night. Today, Carl is 40 years old. Had a card from Mother. She's feeling better now. How glad I am. Today I've been listening to the burial of King George of Great Britain, and when the military gathered around King Edward to sing Abide With Me, I almost wept with them.